You know, the Holy Spirit has worked doing things that we may not even be aware of. How many people know that God's got things and He's already touching in your life that you're not even aware of? He's setting up situations. He's setting up contacts. He's setting up different things that you will one day walk into and you think, "Where? wow, how did that happen? But I want to tell you this morning that the Holy Spirit is at work doing things that we are not even aware of yet. Only way that they will come to pass is through obedience. We've had a lot of prophetic words over the church, and I would imagine most of us here, if we've been in a prophetic in a, in a Pentecostal church, have had prophetic words over your life. We need to plan for what we believe is going to happen, when, where, and how. That's God's business. Amen. But if we just believe that those things and don't let them fall to the ground, don't let them just Slip away, but believe God, and I believe that that's what we're going to see. I'd like for you to open up your Bibles to 2 Timothy. It's at the back there somewhere. 3 verse 1. What I'm, what I'm preaching about today is seek first the kingdom. Seek God. Can I encourage us just to seek God? Seek the Lord with all your heart. Lean not to your own understanding, but in every way acknowledge Him, and He will direct your path. To love the Lord thy God with all your heart. And I believe that God will do exceedingly abundantly above all that we could ever imagine. A lot of times we pray for certain things, and, and sometimes we get disappointed. But friend, just love God, and let God have His way in your life. Let God do what He wants to do. It says here in uh, uh, 2 Timothy 3, verse 1, it says, But know this, that in the last days perilous times will come. For men will be lovers of themselves, lovers of money, boasters, proud, blasphemers, disobedient to parents, unthankful, unholy, unloving, unforgiving, slanderers, without self-control, brutal, despisers of good. Traitors, headstrong, haughty, lovers of pleasure rather than lovers of God, having a form of godliness but denying its power and from such turn away. And though we can read all those things that describes pretty well the, the world today, doesn't it? I think one of the most saddest parts is having a form of godliness but denying its power. From such turn away. So, Father, I ask you today that you would speak to our hearts. Revealer of truth, I ask you today to reveal to us the secrets that you have hidden, the things, the mysteries, my God, that, that you want to open to your church. Lord, we understand and we realize that we are, there is so much more that you have for us. And Lord, I pray that we would be open today to be able to receive and to hear that still small voice or be able to hear you tapping on our shoulder or on the door of our heart, that we might say, God, I want to yield, I want to give way to you. Have your way in my life, and for that we'll give you all the praise and we'll give you all the... You believe that today? Lovers of pleasure. See, man will always seek after something. It's inbuilt in every man. Something that's built into every human person. We seek after praise, we seek after power, we seek after wealth, we seek after pleasure, and you can add your own to that. We will serve or worship something or someone. That's the truth. The entertainment world is flourishing. Sporting events are one massive display of what God's, uh, of, sorry, massive display of what the world has to offer. We hear the, the roar. We hear the amazing applause. We hear just such a, a tremendous thing. People go wild. Tickets can cost thousands of dollars. Super Bowl in America costs millions to put on a 30-second ad. We hear the, the English soccer. We call it football as the crowds of hundreds of thousands of people gather 
as they sing their, their anthems, as they break into song and as they stand with their hand on their heart and as they worship their heroes that are out there kicking a ball full of air. And many times the church, we come and we're silent. I believe that the church has drifted away. Drifted away from the purpose of God for our lives. The church tries to complete, compete with the world. I'm not trying to be critical. I've done it. I've been there. I've done all these things. Trying to compete with a world that's out of control. We put on the flashing lights, the smoke machines, turn off the lights, turn up the sound, and whatever it takes. In many cases, these churches are flourishing. Many, many people are coming to the Lord and joining the church. But for most, they won't be taught about the cross of Calvary. Don't be taught about the blood of Jesus Christ because you shouldn't speak about the blood. They won't hear about the mighty Holy Spirit power to deliver them and set them free from the clutches of Satan. How does Satan turn a people who has been delivered from captivity by the mighty hand of God who crossed over the Red Sea on dry land how David, just a lad, by the power of God, defeated a Goliath. Just a short time after David's death, the children of God have turned away from a living God to serving Baal. Oh, foolish Galatians, who has bewitched you? that you started in the spirit and now you're in the flesh. Friend, the church has got to come back from the flesh. And we've got to turn our attention again to the spirit of Almighty God. We've got to call upon Him while He may be found. We've got to turn. We've got to somehow or other get our focus back on God. And allow the presence of God to get around our lives. Surely the presence of the Lord is in this place. We used to sing songs. I can remember when I first started in Pentecost. I can remember the power of God, the anointing, the victory, the shouts of praise, people being filled with the Holy Ghost. We talked about the Holy Ghost as a, as a real person, as an encounter with God, something that, that every person, person needed. We spoke about the mighty Holy Spirit power and people, somehow or other, there was a hunger on the inside of them for that. We'd see the altars filled with people tarrying, wanting the Holy Ghost. But today he's almost forgotten. He's put aside. I believe and I, and I desire to see again the altars filled with people just wanting God just wanting a touch from God. To get a touch from the Lord is so real. To let God touch your life. Over the last months, I don't know if you've been coming along here for a while, you would obviously realize that the Spirit of God is messing with us. He's, I believe He's requiring more from us. He wants the people to come to Him. To love the Lord thy God with all our heart. It's the greatest commandment. Last week we spoke regarding Hezekiah. He set himself to seek the Lord. And he did it with all of his heart. And God prospered him. Friend, church is not just something we do for an hour or so on Sunday. And then live like the world. It's got to be everything or it's nothing. He sought God with all of his heart, and God prospered him. This morning I want to speak a little bit about a king by the name of Asa. In 2 Chronicles 14, a story about King Asa, his father Abijah, 
let idol worship come right into the midst of God's people. Baal was welcomed to help their crops. Wooden images were supposed to bring fertility. And it was common for children to be sacrificed in the fires of Molin. King Asa, early in his reign, a spiritual climate that was given over to witchcraft. And friend, I want to tell you that I'm drawing hope. I'm drawing confidence because I know that our God has never, ever left us and he has never, ever forsaken his church. His eyes are going to and fro this morning as people come before the presence of God. He's looking for hearts. The Bible says that God is seeking people who will worship him in spirit and in truth. Friend, today, if God never did another thing in my life, I will continue to worship him all the days of my life because of what he has already done. I don't come here this morning asking God for anything. I don't need anything. I don't want anything. I just want to see King Jesus ruling and reigning on planet Earth. I just want to see Jesus the head of the church. I want to see Jesus welcomed. I want to see Jesus acknowledged. I want to see his mighty hand outstretched over his church and over his people, gathering his children as a hen would gather her chicks. I'm reminded of a story that I read a long time ago of a farmer who, who had a, a little farm and he had this little red hen and she just hatched out 12 chicks. And this little hen was gathering and watching over the chicks and one day a fire went through, not long after the chicks were born. And this fire went through and the farmer, as he was looking at his, at his land and his, all his grass was gone and he was a bit discouraged and he was walking through and as he was walking through, he, he noticed a little smoldering heap. And he walked over that little heap and just like farmers do, just kicked it with his boot. And as he kicked it with his boot, Twelve little chicks ran out from underneath that lump. It was the old mother hen. She'd called the chicks to safety. Even though the fire raged, she gave her life. And friend, Jesus didn't give his life just so that we could waste our life. He didn't die for a church so the church would go and die or, or allow worship that's other than the worship for the King of Kings. I love it this morning when we can sing that song and I get excited about that song. And I, it's all right to get excited. Is it okay to get excited? I get excited because to me, as we sing that song and as I watch you people, listen to you people begin to roar and begin to clap, I say, my God, you know, it's we're acknowledging you. We're acknowledging what you've done for us. And my God said to me, and he said to you, I will never, ever leave you nor forsake you. God wants to raise us up. He wants to build us up. And this king comes on the scene in the middle of, of a climate where witchcraft is raging. And look, friend, today we can look at the church, we can look at this and we can look at that. But I want to say, friends, stop looking at what you're looking at and start looking to the heavens. Start looking to God Almighty, amen. Because He is the author and the finisher of our faith. He is God Almighty. He is the creator, amen. And He said, I will build my church and the gates of Hades will not prevail against it. I am going to have a people of power. And it doesn't matter what circumstances or what situation we may be facing. If there's a bunch of people, if Azar can do it, anybody can do it. Amen. If we can turn towards him again, if we can start calling on that name which is above every name, and it may seem a religious prayer, O King of heaven, have mercy on us. God, revive your church. If, you, if we, I tell you what, if, there, if we 
as small bunch as we are, if every one of us got one of those things and started praying that prayer two or three times a day, how many people believe the tide could turn? God can, I, I, went, I, I went to Niagara Falls once and it, it blew me out of the water just looking at that roar and the rage. And then one day I was watching the, uh, something there and, and it showed me where the Niagara Falls had frozen. And I thought, my God, that is impossible. But with God, all things are possible. <laughs> with God, all. How many people believe that God can use us Just let God do something. So here we find King Asa early in his reign in that spiritual climate that was given over to witchcraft. Asa comes on the scene and does what was good and right in the sight of God. He removed the foreign altars and the high places. He smashed the sacred stones and cut down the wooden images. And he commanded, not asked, but he commanded Judah to seek the Lord the God of their fathers, to obey His laws and His commandments. Friend, I want to tell you the secret for a revival is to seek the Lord with all your heart. You seek God. I think it would be fair if I said this, Australia has drifted away from a true and living God. We have a form of godliness but not much power. I would love to say here that everybody we pray for gets healed. I'd love to say that everything that we do... No, friend, I want to tell you, we've got a long way to go. But if you don't start a journey with the first step, you'll never make it. We've got to start a journey. Australia's gone a long way. They've gone to a God made by hands. Puts demands on them that is destroying families and this nation. Australia must return to God. And may I say it, the church must return to God. I want to ask you today that you would seek God, that you would come to God, trust Him, Believe on him. Asa did what was right in the sight of God, and he had rest from his enemies. Asa was an interesting guy. His mother, after 10 years, and after after an amazing victory that he just won, he'd come back from this victory, and he finds that his mother, the queen mother, still has uh, still worships one of these obscene wooden images. They are obscene. He stripped his mother of the position of queen mother. He got hold of this image and he tore it to pieces and, and burned it and did it whatever else he had to do with it. But in doing that, in reality, what he was saying to the people, this guy's fair income. He is serious about what's going on. Here's Asa, he's doing everything that he can, he's doing everything that's right, just like Hezekiah. But how many people know that there is an enemy that goes around? Remember our saying here? There's an enemy that goes around like a roaring lion, seeking whom he may devour. But Jesus is the lion of the tribe of Judah. He goes around seeking whom he may empower. How many people want God to empower you? Come on, do you want God? Father, come on, what do you want him? Father, we want to be empowered by your presence. We want to be empowered by your spirit. Just because we're doing right doesn't mean that the enemy won't try to destroy your faith in God. Now, you've got to understand It's not you that he's after. It's your faith in God that he's after. It's your destiny that he's after. It's what you're going to do for God that he's after. It's what you can do for God. 
Samuel could have got himself all in a hissy. He's doing everything that's right. He's loving God. He's leading the people. And all of a sudden, the people rise up and they say, we want a king. <laughs> we want a king. We want to be like other nations. This is what the church is doing today. We want to be like everybody else. You know, the, you, know you read the stories of the Methodist church, the, 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 all those, the, the, even the Brethren church. The Salvation Army all started off in a blaze of glory. And today, in, in most, please forgive me for saying this, but they're, they're forgotten so much and they're taken away so much. And friend, if we don't watch it, the Pentecostal church is doing exactly the same. Because it's the same devil. It's the same rotten devil. He's had 6,000 years practice. And he's had a lot of success. But I believe that there's a church, a time, a people. And we're not the church. We are, there's only one church in the world. We are just part of that. If we're not careful, we'll go the same way. But I want to encourage you to turn your hearts to God. Get a hold of God. Do what God wants you to do. He wants to destroy your faith in God. But like David, Asa, and Hezekiah, we must know where your strength comes from. David said, my strength is from the Lord. Jesus, in all his wisdom, Jesus, in all his wisdom, came to his 12 and said, it's better for you if I go. Because when I go, I'm going to send the Holy Spirit. And he will come into your life. And when you receive the Holy Spirit, you're going to receive power. You're going to be witnesses under me. You're going to be my person. You're going to be my church. Jesus, in all his wisdom, wanted to pour out his spirit. Friend, we need the Holy Ghost power. We need revelation. Paul's prayer in Ephesians, he says, I pray that the eyes of your understanding would be opened, that you might know. Friend, I just don't want some religious thing, but I want to know because I know because I know because I know that you might know what is this exceeding greatness of his power to us would who believe according to the working of his mighty power which he wrought in Christ when he raised him from the dead and slapped the devil up the side of the head and smashed him and crushed him and put him down and put him right pulled him right up to his face and said listen here boy I'm going to have a church that's going to kick your butt yeah. I'm going to have a people I long, I tell you what, I long. And I want to tell you this, we don't want a children's church that's going up there doing coloring in. I want a children's church with the power of God in it. That when, when that child goes home and they've drunken daddy sitting on the chair in the lounge and that little child got full of the Holy Ghost goes up there and slaps his hand on that big drunken daddy's belly and says, devil, get out of my dad. <laughs> And see him slip off the chair on the floor. <laughs> that's, that's religious. <laughs> All of a sudden there's a Ethiopian army comes against Asa. One million foot soldiers, 300 chariots, 
Asa has 580,000 men of war. Would you like to open up your Bible to 2 Corinthians 14? Is it all right to read out of the Bible? You know what it is. It's a Bible. <laughs> eh? This book. It's an amazing book, isn't it? It's an amazing book. This great troop comes against him. And Asa cried out to, to, to the Lord his God and said, Lord, oh, friend, get, get a hold of this. It is nothing. <laughs> is anything too hard for God? You, you got to... It is nothing. <laughs> it's so easy. It's just, it's just nothing for you to help, whether with many or with those who have no power. Help us, O oh Lord, O oh God, for we rest in you. I want to tell you, that word rest, if you could just get a bit of a, you know, it's not a struggle, it's not a strive, it's a rest because it's a knowing. It's a knowing. And this guy had a knowing. He said, hey, 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 listen, this is nothing. They might have a million. They might have 300 uh, uh, chariots. They might have all this huff and puff. And they might be there doing all their thing. But I want to tell you, God, it's nothing. God, we, we, we know that we're helpless in the natural. Hey, that's a good thing to learn. Because I don't care. I don't care whether you've got... That many degrees in your life that they call you Dr. Fahrenheit. <laughs> the degrees don't help. They might help a little bit. I'm not just pleased. What an amazing thing. It's knowing. It's knowing if God before you who can be again you. It's knowing that God wants to, you to triumph over your enemies. It's knowing that Jesus wears the victor's crown. It's knowing. That's why I love that song so much, when I, especially that last thing, that last bit about the grave. <laughs> that puts doodads on me. We have no power. Help us, O Lord, our God, for we rest on you. And in your name we go against this multitude, O Lord. You are our God. Do not let man prevail against, what's the next word? Not us. You see, he's not after us. He's after you. He's after him. He's wanting to stop what God's doing. God has already doing things that you and I are not aware of. God has got a plan, and the enemy wants to stop that plan. So the Lord struck the Ethiopians before Asa and Judah, and the Ethiopians fled. And Asa and all and the people who were with him pursued them uh, to uh, Gerar. So the Ethiopians were overthrown. And they could not recover, for they were broken before the Lord and his army. And they carried away very much spoil. And they defeated all the cities around Gerar. For the fear of the Lord came upon them, and they plundered all the cities. For there was exceeding much spoil in them. They also attacked the livestock enclosures and carried off sheep and camel camels in abundance and returned to Jerusalem. Father, I believe that that's the answer. You see, if we seek him, it says there, I, I should have gone on a bit further. It says, if you seek him, you will be found, he will be found by you. 
But if you forsake him, he will forsake you. That's an amazing thing. See, what a lot of us forget when we come to the Lord, we don't clean house and remove the things that are not pleasing to God. One of the true signs of God moving in your life and you are seeking after God and getting hungry for the move of the Spirit in your life, the Holy Spirit puts a shovel and a broom in your hand. People begin to deal with issues in their lives, buried issues. I believe that, friend, God is dealing with people. He's dealing with His church. People begin to look closer to what they watch on TV and what movies they see. We just see the danger and gossip and criticism. Our social life changes. I don't want to do that anymore. Remember in Romans 2.4 it says, It's the goodness of God that leads us to repentance. Don't give the devil room to bring a charge against you. God knows the numbers of hairs on your head. He knows all about us. He sees our hurts. Can I say one of the major problems I see for people to rise up today is brokenness and hurts in people's lives. He sees our hurts. He sees the betrayals, the brokenness the shattered dreams, the anger. No. He didn't send his son to put a band-aid on the problems of life. But he sent Jesus to be a deliverer. We can't minister out of our hurts. We make mistakes. We get hurt. People need to recon uh, be reconnect reconnected to God before they go out for the harvest. This today, I read a story. And because Jesus is the same yesterday, today, and forever, I believe when God speaks by the Spirit, that that word is just as much mine as anybody else's, because the whole book was written. And some of the prophetic words and things that have been spoken today, if the book of Acts was still being written, it would be what, chapter 7,623, if you know what I'm talking about. Because you see, the book of Acts is the only book that doesn't have an end. It's still being written. It's still happening, and we're still part of it. And I know that to me, the, as I said, over the last months, most surely, if I'm real honest with you, the last seven years, as I've come back to the Sunshine Coast to plant a church, I've had all the emotions and all the things and everything else attacked. Prior to that, all the other hurts and disappointments and things like that 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 the enemy can bring a charge against you. Times your whole bitterness. Sometimes it's hard to pick up the phone and ring that person that you don't want to talk to and do something. But unless we do it, we stay bound. And I, and I honestly believe that, and I'm talking really, just talking, okay, I really believe that God wants to release His church from hurts and brokennesses and disappointments. Everybody shut your eyes. Anybody here ever been hurt? Would you put up your hand? Brokenness. Put them all down. That's everybody. You know what I'm talking about? How many people know what I'm talking about? Just shake your head. And this is a true story. 
And there was a group of people that were basically atheists, away from God, didn't know God at all. But they came to a place where the presence of God was. I cannot, I cannot say this enough. We need the presence of God more than we need anything else. All we need is you, Lord. We just need the presence of God to get around our lives. And these people came into the presence of God. And as they did, the power of God hit them. You see, when you come into the presence of God, it touches you. And I've been in meetings where I've seen hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of people fall under the power just by lifting your hand. I said one day, I want to tell you, and I did that, and everybody in the room fell over. Joe was talking about somewhere where he was, and he said something like that, and, and everybody fell over. And this group of people, they came into the presence of God. And they all fell under the power of God. But while they were under the power of God, they started to see open visions. I don't think I've ever had an open vision myself. But these people started to see an open vision. And Jesus revealed himself to them. And that's why I say if Jesus speaks... It's just as relevant to that bunch as it is to me. Is that okay? It's just as relevant to you. And I want to I want you to, if you can, just shut your eyes for a moment. Jesus is the same yesterday, today, and forever. And what he's done for others, he'll do for you. If your heart's open, he can help us. And this is what Jesus said to them. I want to talk to you about all the pain in your life. I want to talk to you about everything you're carrying, all the wounds that you've received. I want to tell you that I'm here to heal those hurts and take away the pain and set you free so that you can live liberated lives. I have a plan for you, and I want to release it. Now, I want you to look at my hands and my feet and my side, and I want you to see my wounds. Well, you didn't deserve the wounds that you have in your heart, and I didn't deserve the wounds that I carried in my body but I volunteered to have them so that your pain could be dealt with in my pain. I will carry your pain, take it away if you turn to me. I will heal you and I will deliver you and I will set you free for life. Father, I ask you today by your spirit that you just touch us. Come, Holy Spirit, come in your own special way. Come to heal the hurts and the wounds that we will be liberated, that we will be free. Lord, that we won't be molded by man or molded by what we think is expected of us. But Lord, you would be able to mold us into your image. And Father, we'll just give you all the praise and we'll give you all the glory in Jesus' mighty name. Amen and amen. And if God's talking to you and you want just a, that release from that brokenness and the hurts, the disappointments, whatever it might be, that you can be liberated. Everybody say liberated. I want to be liberated, Lord. I want to be free. I just want to be free. I want you just to come. But God's here. He's bigger than me. He can speak to your heart. Just come. And let God's presence come around your life this morning.